Hi, Kay. I just would like to welcome everyone who's watching us right now. Together with me today is a very good friend of mine. I used to bunk with her when I was in Hong Kong when we would travel to visit some clients, right? So I'm extra happy that she has the time to talk to us today. I would like perhaps Daryl to give us a little bit more of an introduction about herself before we begin to ask her about her life in Hong Kong and about her growing career. Is that okay, Daryl? Growing. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Kay. You're welcome. Uh, happy to be here, actually, uh, having this conversation with you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Darlene Visco. I am uh, based in Hong Kong. I've been here for 15 years. I'm working for Refinitiv, uh, previously Thomson Reuters. Mm -hmm. Actually, it uh, last July was my 20th year in total. Wow! So quite a journey, yes. Um, as I said, I've been here for 15 years. I live here with my husband. Uh, I'm an account manager um, for Refinitiv. Mm -hmm. So I look after um, what we call global accounts, okay. whatever you call it nowadays. But, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Global banks. Well, that's so, so interesting, Darla. And I think Hong Kong is one of those places that a lot of Filipinos love going to, not just for the shopping, the food is awesome, <laughs> right? So right, I, I, exactly. I am so excited for you to share with us what kind of adventure you're having, right? So, but I guess, mm -hmm. especially for the audience that we have, can you tell us a little bit more about this beginning part of the journey? Right, because before you became an account manager for this company, where did it all begin? Yeah, sure. So I started in our Manila office. Um, so it's actually not my first job. So Thomson Reuters or Thomson was not my first job. I worked for Keppel and then a, an ex-colleague um, for a few years only, ex-colleague invited me to join Thomson. I never thought, oh, it's a big company. It's setting up new, um, new teams in Manila. And I said, yeah, quite interesting to, uh, company to move to. So I started there. I worked for about four years, over four years, set up the team. That's how I met you. Yeah. Um, essentially serving, servicing the corporate, the listed companies right. um, for, um, at the time, Thomson Corp. So it, it was a great experience. And then I thought after yeah, about four years, I thought it's good to look, you know, explore other options opportunities outside of the country. I thought it's a good time to have exposure outside mm -hmm. and being an, um, an international company, Thomson offered that um, opportunity. So when an opening came up uh, in Hong Kong, I actually wanted to move to Singapore first because some of our friends and colleagues yeah. have started to move there, but there was no opening that time. And there was this Hong Kong op and I just, you know, exp I just tried. So, um, and the boss back then was a great mentor as well. She, Joanne Horn, remember? Mm -hmm. So I thought it might, you know, it, it should offer this role would be great because there would be a very, a great mentor and boss to learn from. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so that's how I, I did it. I, I applied, just tried my luck yeah. and I thought, okay, I'll just, yeah, just see how things go. And luckily it ended up well and was offered a job and then um, obviously my ex boss was supportive and yeah. quite happy yeah. for me to be moving into um, this new role. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I moved. And then nice. when I, yeah, and then I uh, was in that role. So that was like content manager for Asia Pacific. Nice. So it was a great team. I worked there for um, six years. Yeah. So again, um, during those six years, no, there was a time when I felt like I should do something else. Right. Actually, after about two, three years, should I, I was thinking about trying different roles, right? And there was a lot of opportunities too, especially yeah. Hong Kong, right? Yeah. There's just too many roles. Yeah. It's the financial um, uh, oh. district, right? Yeah. Financial hub for yeah. Asia. And um, I didn't have a lot of client exposure back then because we were in content orbit. Yeah. And then I thought maybe it's a, you know maybe it's a time it's time for me to also look into roles uh, yeah. into client facing roles. Yeah. And then that's how I started to ask colleagues, um, some of our friends, Filipino friends who are working in in those roles like mm -hmm. Jerry and Katrina. Right. And I thought yeah, so they were in client facing roles, and I thought before um, that I could also you know explore that I could also try. 
being in the content role for a while. Mm -hmm. So there was this dilemma or, you know, because getting out of your comfort zone, you yeah. always feel like, oh, I may not be, it may not be the right fit. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know, sometimes clients are scary. Mm -hmm. So there was that doubt at first yeah. and there was no real great opportunity back then. But I just kept, you know, I just keep thinking about it. Yeah. And then there was this opportunity again um, that, you know, for a client specialist role, it's a client facing role, um, like client training. Um, and I actually talked to the manager and I was just randomly asking her, it was a chat at the, uh, the <laughs> cafe. Yeah, the pantry. I said, I'm at, I was just, we were just chatting and she mentioned about, because I was asking her um, about some roles yes. in the client facing role, right? Yes. And she said, actually, I have got a role, but it's like, um, it's like a secondment, like a temporary role, yeah. like six months. Yeah. Because one of her staff was going on maternity leave. Right. And then I spoke to my boss back then, Helen, and I asked if I could join. So that's how I got into the client facing role. Nice. And it was just for, you know, and I enjoyed it. So when I moved into that role, obviously it was temporary. I've got a full support of my manager back then, Helen, you know, and and also obviously my new manager. So it was a it was it was a good transition because yes. it was kind of uh, bit by bit. And at, at the time when I started, it was a temporary one, right? Yeah. yeah. And although towards the end of that six months, I was feeling like I really wanted to stay. I was enjoying seeing customers being exposed directly to them and really working on different things now, right? But then at the back of my mind, I knew I had to go back to the previous role. And then the restructuring happened. Mm -hmm. And apparently there was no role, no team to go back to. <laughs> so I was also fortunate to, and at the time there was, a, there was somebody moving in that team, in our current team to Taiwan. And so they needed somebody. Yeah. So then my, my, my position got, you know, that was like a, became permanent. Perfect. So that's how I ended up in the client facing role. Right. And then I've just transitioned from that into account management roles. Yeah. Because I think that was the natural movement or yeah. progression yeah. where you're in client facing from client training into bigger responsibilities in account management, wherein you're having your own quota and targets. Yeah. So I started with smaller accounts and then now handling um, bigger or global accounts. So a lot of different challenges. Right. So it was really quite a journey. And um but I thought it's, I kind of was thinking it actually, yeah, it's kind of a good one because it wasn't, it was, you know, it was, um, what do you call it? It's slow, it was a slow, I don't know what do you call it. Yeah, I couldn't it, find a term, but. Yeah, but I get what you mean, Darl. It, it was as if it, you were hesitating in the beginning because you weren't sure that you were ready, but the way kind of, it was serendipitous almost, you know, it was, it was at the pace that you could yes. actually manage, right? Right, Which yes, exactly. And and just at the start of it all, usually when you were asking yourself, you're always waiting for like a sign yeah. or an, an opportunity that you couldn't really you know, pass up, right? So I, and I thought I was always waiting for that and it would somehow, you know, something would present itself and that's mm -hmm. how I would, you know, take it you know, yeah, yeah make the move yes yes, yes. so it's, and it's interesting darl sorry just to just to kind of take away from that i think one of the things that often when you know yuppies or i guess new grads get into a company they immediately i suppose assume that their career is going to be taken care of by this company but the mm -hmm. reality is, you know, there is a lot of a lot of misconception in that regard, right? Because as people from yes. the corporate world, we have to be able to also look at the opportunities that's available and go for it when we want to, no? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened to you. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. It yeah, good point. Because I I know that a lot of the the younger professionals right now think, yeah, you're right, exact point, <laughs> that it will be all laid out for them. No, <laughs> you kind of have to work for it. You yeah. kind of work towards it. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's, it's something that you have to explore yourself. 
yeah. because it's a combination of what you think you're you're very good at, what you like to do, yes. and what the opportunities are, and how you'd want to navigate towards that, right? Exactly. But you're right; it is something we have to look for and work towards. Yeah, it, it's not; it doesn't get laid out in front of us. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, 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 Darl, now that you are an account manager, right? One of the things, I guess, the bigger question is. You don't really go through a course and become an account manager, right? <laughs> <laughs> how do you learn how to become an account manager? I guess mentoring is part of the mix, but can you talk mm -hmm. to us about, you know, getting into the groove oh. of what you do now? Right, right. Yes, um, there. You're right. There is a lot of it is on the job. Yeah. So, and as you said, mentoring is a big part of it. So spending a lot of time with the experts yeah. um, um, and a good mentoring from your manager is could also help, would help a lot because if you've got a good program and I guess it all good program to go through in terms of uh, handling customers, um, you know, um, building relationships, also um, objection handling and all these things, if conflict management. Yeah. And these are all things that we learn as we get exposed to them. And as we, you know, and we were for, signed, kind of forced to handle. Exactly. I think I was kind of lucky that I had a, a smooth transition because I started in client uh, training or client specialist role. So it, you know, it, it kind of bit, bit by bit um, exposed me. So it wasn't a straight on account management. So there was um, kind of a transition. Right. But then as you get exposed, then you, you, get you learn the different you know the bigger challenges the clients will throw at you and then you kind of need to to learn so you ask the, the more experienced members of your team so mentoring right so as i said um management or your your manager's um, yeah. guidance is very helpful yeah. and spending time with um a mentor or um Either you find some mentor in the company yeah. or you just approach um, the more experienced team members. Exactly. And the good thing with the car, with our company and with Refinitive, as you know, a lot of people are very open yeah. to sharing, especially um, if they know you're new in, in a role. So they're always, they're always people happy to help yes. and offer advice. Yes. And if you do go and just take on those advice, then you really learn a lot. That's so that's, right. that's what I've done is really go through, you know, there was a management um, guidance yeah. and as well as, yeah, learning from other people who are very good at this. Right. And I think that's why it's important, Daryl, for us to look for the culture that we can thrive in. No, I think yes. one of those things that people take for granted, when you look at a job, a lot of times it's usually the, the amount of money that you will get, where it's located so that you can travel easily, right? Yes. Uh, you know, your manager, that he, but really culture has to play a big part in looking for a job that really will fit your, your characteristics and your, your goals for yourself as well. Yeah. And just picking up. From yeah, what that's said, important. Right. I think picking up from what you said, also this idea of mentorship, this mentoring idea, it doesn't have to be somebody who is, you know, higher than you in terms of level no darl i think it's yes it's anybody who has more experience than you because mentoring is really teaching right on mm -hmm. the job and picking up from their experiences right? experience yes agree and it doesn't have to be a formal mentoring right you know it is something that you know as required and you can always make arrangements yes but i guess the good thing is being open to these things yes you're willing to learn from everyone who are actually better at this right because in time you will develop yourself and be will be better at what you do yeah. but you need time right yeah and i guess always being open and happy to learn yeah. will really will get you there as well yeah correct because that openness and that that willingness to learn is really a part of you that has to be humble you have to recognize yes. <laughs> that everyone starts at the at the beginning right at, at a certain yes. stage where you really all you need to do is be open to what you learn need to learn yes exactly yeah. i also just want to add that that's why when you're starting right it's always important to to build a good reputation for yourself right yeah. because also people are supportive and happy when you know you're you have got a good reputation it always precedes you right and always willing to help if they know that 
you know, you're somebody worth keeping or you're yes. really good, you know. Yes, completely yeah. agree because then they see your value in the team, right? Yes. Very yes. true, Daryl. What as we as we go on with our conversation, Daryl, I think it begs the question now. Could you share with us what challenges you've experienced in your role and mm -hmm. how you've yes. decided to deal with those? Because because yeah. I, I know you and I know you've gone through a lot and we are mm -hmm. you know, very lucky to have you talk to us right now mm -hmm. about things to learn from you. Sure. So, um, challenges a lot. One is, what, what should I say? Um, I guess it's proving that people you yeah. know the people around you right. there will always be supporters right cheerleaders and yeah. there will always be those that are kind of yeah. doubting your yeah. capability so I guess I have that um I had that challenge as well especially when I was transitioning into the client facing role as to whether I can really do the job yeah. and it's always that feeling that you know the imposter um yeah. syndrome. syndrome they feel like yeah. I have to you know to show that I know but deep inside I'm also wondering can I really do the job but of course you do but sometimes you just get this self-doubt that you yeah. couldn't avoid yeah and you just gotta overcome that how do I how did I you know talking to to friends and yeah. my husband who's always very supportive and who's always reinforcing self-confidence you know my you know just believe in yourself I believe in you so it's it's really just that um other things obviously would be you know, specific to client situations, yeah. there are always like issues and problems. And I guess, and sometimes there's just too many of them all at the same time to be handled. Right. Right. It, it's really, and it can get to you because it's really about yeah. just too much bureaucracy, yeah. you know, inefficiencies, yeah. these things. And yeah. it's, these are day to day. It's not like we've overcome them already. Yeah. So what we just try to do is just face them up, you know, one by one, just trying to kind of really um, go through, okay, so what is the problem? Yeah. Uh, what are the options yeah. to solve? Yeah. And, but sometimes I really have to step back and really think about which is the most urgent one, which are the ones that are, would have the most impact that I have to deal with now, then I deal with it first. Mm. And then obviously talk it out with the teams that I work with, and even you know to my GBD. Yeah. So there's always there's always a problem, but it's it's really thinking taking a step back. I think that's always helped me. Yeah. And really, it's just to help me refocus and say, okay, among these things, I list them down. Obviously, right? I'm still a posted person, like a to-do person uh, on paper. And then I would think, okay, which is the which are the ones that I really need to handle first? Mm -hmm. And then I review again and see, okay what kind of problems and what are the options. Right. But sometimes it's the part, the challenge is also having to, uh, you're getting really overwhelmed by the volume, right? And sometimes it's also the mood that you're in. Yeah. At the time you feel like, oh, this is too much. Right. I really need to find a new job. But in reality, you can only do so much and take in so much, give yourself a break, right? Yes. Breathe and then, <laughs> Step back and read things. Right. Wonderful words because these are things you've learned from experience. I think definitely prioritizing is key. You know, you also mentioned self care. Breathing mm. is a form of self care, right? <laughs> and Correct. breathing yes. activates a part of our brain that really tells our body to relax. So, breathing is True. one of those quick and easy things that you can do to help yourself manage stress throughout the day. Definitely. I, I yeah. think Carl, one of the more important things that you also mentioned was really trying to, you know, when challenges come, it's really about you thinking of solutions to it, but also realizing that simply there are things that just are beyond your control, no? Mm -hmm. And yes. when that happens, then you do your best, God will do the That's rest. <laughs> Yes, I agree. Of course, prayers too, right? Yeah. And you, you said you just do your part and then there are things just beyond you for whatever reason. It's global in nature. It's client related. And as long as you've done your part, you know, you've done your share and you just pray yeah. that things will turn out to be fine. Right. It's, it's, really, yeah. it's really just that. 
that's true. But and as you mentioned about stress, sorry, stress management, that's very important because in this kind of work, which is very competitive and very, you know, very, very um, demanding, then you really need to take care of yourself and really do things that allow you to de-stress. Yeah, so yeah, very important as well. Very good, because I think, Darl, in this particular part of the interview, I need to show them pictures of you and jobs and your <laughs> physical activities, right? <laughs> <laughs> because right. one of those things that you you know just it just came to my mind right now that you are so blessed to be living in a place where you can really do all these different outdoor activities no agree yeah. i think you're you're right um very fortunate yeah. to be able to enjoy this um it's not a big hong kong is not a big place but the good thing about it is you can explore a lot um and you can do different activities in a day. It's just yeah. easy to travel around yeah. with the MTR. Yeah. There's just so many hiking trails, yeah. biking trails that you can explore. Yeah, and oh, it's, it's very safe to do them. Yeah. So yeah, very yeah. glad to be. It's, it's cooling down, so it's yeah. you know, hiking season <laughs> again. <laughs> right. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so Darl, as we kind of go towards the end of our conversation, I guess I also wanted to touch on two more things. One is, what is it like to live in Hong Kong? Right. <laughs> it's, um, I love living here. Obviously, I've been here for 15 years. I pretty much spent my, most of my career. But what is it like? It's, it's fun. For me, it's fun. Hong Kong is a very efficient place. It's a small place, but it's very efficient in a lot of things. Transportation, um, Everything here, banking, yes. you know, the practical stuff, yeah. shopping, yeah. food, great. You've got a great selection, international selection. You can find everything here. You can even find our own Pinoy food. We've got Worldwide House if we're craving for anything Pinoy. <laughs> or, and we've there. got a few Pinoy restaurants that we can go to whenever we crave for liempo ah, or barbecue. Right. Those things. So it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great place that, you know, it allows you to do you work during the week, intense work, but it also allows you to enjoy life after that yeah. and, you know, explore, um, do your, in our case, do our badminton, right. explore outdoors. Um, yeah, and it's yeah. very close to Pinas, right? Exactly. Well, of course, before the COVID situation, yeah. we've been, we go back like every two months yeah. and it's always a nice thing because it's close to our families if whenever yeah. we want to visit. Yes. Yeah. You know, we can easily do that. Um, so that's why we love living here. And taxes are low also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of perks, Darl, no? I'm, I, I needed to ask for those who want to also try, you know, the Hong Kong lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know? Who knows? Because I think a lot of Filipinos are always open to living abroad. And I think Hong Kong yes. definitely is a, de a good option. Not only does it have <laughs> the four seasons that you want to enjoy, right? Yes. But again, yes. all of the things that you just mentioned. So, um, Darl, I guess my last question for you, and thank you so much for, again, sharing, being so open about sharing all these things with us. My last question would be around, you know, just nuggets of wisdom and advice, Darl. Mm -hmm. You could tell yourself things. Now that you know what you know, what would those things be? Right. Um, I guess it would be that if I really wanted to do something, yeah. I'll immediately go for it, especially when I'm, this is a younger self, right? So when you're young, it's actually the best time to be doing things that you always, or you thought. I had that, it took me a few years to actually move into something um, that I wanted to do, like doing client-facing role, sales role, because at first I thought I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the main thing that I would tell myself if, you kind of feel like you wanted to explore something, just yeah. go for it, especially yeah. when you're young. You've yeah. got the time, you've got the energy, yeah. and you're just starting to build your career. So it's a great time to do that. Um, just, just explore and enjoy it as well, right? Yeah. Because as you discover what you're good at, what you enjoy doing more, then you'd be able to navigate yeah. you know, um, into the career that you want to be in. Um, more quickly or easier, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably 
perfect what I could think of at the moment yeah <laughs> you were asking yeah. me this earlier and I was thinking <laughs> what should it be but yeah I think that's yeah but that I, I think that resonates a lot because often we hesitate thinking mm-hmm. that without any experience perhaps I'm not ready for this But Mm -hmm. without trying, you don't really gain the experience. It's a chicken and egg situation, right? But yes. So (laughs) thank you so much, Daryl. We enjoyed our time with you. I'm sure that a lot of people who are listening have learned a thing or two, you know, about not just moving to a different country, but taking on responsibilities and different tasks that they feel they're not ready for. So encouraging words, Daryl. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I'm glad to be uh, to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's a great thing what you're doing. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dara, because that's also encouraging to me. I yeah. really, I really am hoping that you know we are able to help a lot more of the Filipinos out there all over the world. Just give them the inspiration and the courage to take more things on. You know. So thank you, Daryl, because you're a part of so many people's journey now. Take care, okay? Yeah, Enjoy the rest of Thank your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Take care.